So open up Microsoft Excel, open up the text file that you previously downloaded, and when you uh, are prompted with this text import wizard window, select delimited, then turn off the tab delimitation and select the comma, and you can click finish from there. Okay, row one of this uh, data file displays the name of the site and controller. Uh, you can ignore these two cells here. The second row gives you the date stamp and uh, the date and the time. This is the date and this is the time of the first data point. The third row displays the parameter IDs of the controller that are enabled. Rows 4 through 37 are the rows for the historical data and rows 38 through 71 are the description names or the descriptors of the uh, parameters or inputs and outputs. This would be this 38 would be input A, 39 would be input B, 40 input C, 41 is input D. It is important that you understand that these rows, 38 through 71, correlate with the data rows starting from four, row 4 down to 37. So 38 is uh, input that's titled tower temperature is associated with row number 4. And so row number 4 is data all of this historical data going horizontally from left to right is all of the historical data for the tower temperature parameter. Row number five is the historical data for the parameter called reclaim makeup temp. The asterisks mean that there's no data. So in this case, there is no data for reclaim makeup temp. Row number six is the historical data for tower temperature, or tower pH, excuse me. Row number seven is the historical data for row 41, tower ORP. And so each row here in uh, four through 37 correlates with rows 38 through 71. What would be nice is if we can view this data in a column format whereby we have the title of a column be the name of a parameter and going vertically from top to bottom we have the historical data for that parameter and we can do that in Excel. Now what we're going to do is take the parameter names and copy them. So I'm going to do scroll down and um, I'm going to copy and now I'm going to go create a new page down here, right click on a cell, and go to Paste Special, and then click, select the Transpose option. Selecting the Transpose option will transpose the names of the parameters from a vertical format to a horizontal format into their own cells. Now with all of this selected, I'm going to go to Format, and auto fit column width. That way I can read all the names of all of the parameters. So now column A is the tower temperature, column B is the reclaim makeup temperature, column C is tower pH and so forth. Now we've got to bring in the historical data. So we go back to the initial um, page, scroll up to row number four and select all the rows number four through 37 and then copy that. Go back to sheet that you created, the other sheet that you created. Right click in underneath the tower temperature or the first cell in the second row and go to paste special and then select transpose and click OK. So now we can see in a vertical fashion the tower temperature in this case reading from top to bottom is all of the historical 
data values for tower temperature. And if we, uh, and that will be true for all of the other parameters going across window here. And as you can see, the tower pH, this all looks like pH values. Tower ORP, this is all looking good. Again, all of the asterisks imply that there is no data for that uh, time period. Okay, at this point, what we are missing is the date stamp for each row. We would like to know what the date and time is for each one of these rows. So to do that, we first uh, right-click on the column A box, the actual column there. Right-click on it and go to insert. So you can see that Excel created a new column such that column B is now the tower temperature. Everything's been shifted over one. So we have to know what the date and time is of the first data point in our record set here. So the way to do this is we go back to the initial page and notice here in column A, row number two, it tells us that this data is hourly starting from Wednesday, December 1st, 1990. And here it um, tells us the hour, the first hour. So zero um, o'clock is midnight of December 1st, 1999. So I can go back to sheet one and I can give the column a um, title. And then I want to put in this uh, cell here, December 1st, 1999 at 0 o'clock. And then I'm going to format all of these cells. So I click the column A here so it all highlights. Right click it and go to Format Cells. And select a date category. Let's scroll down. You can choose a date format that you prefer. I prefer month uh, day, year, and 24-hour format. Okay, so you can see it changed the format here. And now, um, with a smart series controller, we know for a fact that all data points are logged once an hour on the hour. So the implication here is if this row represents December 1st, 1999, midnight, we know by the, uh, how the smart, series, the smart Series controller works, the next data point is going to be 1 o'clock a.m. So I'm going to put 12, 1, 99, and 1 o'clock. And we can put in one more for good measure. This next row is 2 o'clock. Okay. Okay. Now I don't want to have to enter in the time and date for every one of these rows. The easiest way to do that is click in the first cell of the first data stamp, uh, time stamp. So that would be cell A2. And then we're going to scroll down to the last cell, which is around the uh, row 800 something. Here we go, row 829 in this case. And before I click this cell A829, I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard. And then I click the cell A829. I go up to this, uh, up to the ribbon here, or the toolbar, which you can call it. Make sure you're in the home tab, the home ribbon. And you go to fill, click it, and select series. Now in the type, series type, you select autofill and then click OK. And then you can double click this little line here that separates A and B column and automatically formats it so you can see all the dates. And notice now all of the date stamps are automatically added in increments of an hour uh, from row 2 down to row 800.